It's that time again, everybody's favorite game, Cursed Content. I have to admit, I actually also enjoy these a little bit. I pretend that I don't because the content is indeed so cursed. Really the cursedest content on the internet. Only the cursedest that my uh, producers select for me. And uh, you know how I know that's true? It looks like this one involves Joe Biden. So I know that it is, cur it is cursed. Okay, here we go. I'm watching this. I haven't seen this. What fresh hell is this? I want to say two things about the GDP report we received this morning. First, it's important to start with what we know before this morning's report. Our job market remains historically strong. Our economy created more than 9 million jobs since I came to office, in no small part because the people on this stage. Did not Our economy create created jobs. more than 1 million jobs in the second quarter. The same period as today's GDP report covers. And our unemployment rate is 3.6 percent, near a record historic low. Secondly, households and businesses, the engines of our economy, continue to move forward. Where is he? What now, is there's that? no doubt we expect growth to be slower last, than last year and uh, the rapid clip we had. <clears throat> but that's consistent with the transition to a stable, steady growth and lower inflation. There's going to be a lot of chatter today on Wall Street and among pundits about whether we are in a recession. But if you look at our job market, consumer spending, business investment, we see signs of economic progress in the second quarter as well. And yesterday's Fed Chairman, uh, the Fed Chairman Powell said, made it clear that he doesn't think the U.S. economy is currently in a recession. He said, quote, there are too many areas of economic where the economy is performing too well. He pointed to the labor market as an example. <laughs> oh, man. All right, bro. I, I am just, as I, I always say this when we talk about the economy, like I am just some dude that reads old books for a living. I'm not a math guy. I'm like not an economist at all, which is why it is so dispiriting that this stuff is so obviously nonsense, even to me, like even to somebody who is really like beyond balancing a checkbook, not your brightest economic mind. First of all, I will say this every dang time we talk about this subject, I'm going to keep saying it because it absolutely smokes me. It makes me so mad when they talk about creating jobs, right? You do not get to take away fundamental rights from the people. You do not get to shutter their businesses and take away their right to make a living, the right to their property. You do not get to do that and then turn around and say that because you gave those rights back, you are the good guy because you created those jobs. You did not create those jobs. Those jobs were taken away by the left, right? By Democrat politicians and Democrat states, by and large, right? Those, those, that economic downturn that we had from COVID, it was not, it was not caused by COVID. It was caused by disrespectful, arrogant elites who thought that they had the right to tell you how to run your business and your life and to take away the rights that were never theirs to give or take to begin with. The government does not have the right to take fundamental rights away from you. It exists to protect those rights. It is not in the the business or it should not be in the business of shutting down people's livelihoods and then turning around and saying, oh, we've created jobs like BS. You created zero job. I mean, the, perhaps zero is an exaggeration, but the all of these jobs that are coming back as people return to work, as the covid restrictions ease, it's like, oh, pat yourself on the back as yes, we created jobs a complete lie, just a thoroughgoing lie from start to finish. And then this thing where it's like, the their only solution to any problem is to just redefine it out of existence, just redefine words, right? It's like, so I guess the typical rule, the SOM rule is that if you're in a contracting GDP for two quarters, you're in a recession. And now they're like, well, that's some, some people would say that, but then there's other rules. I mean, apparently they've like now changed the definition on Wikipedia and locked the page for editing, um, which is another a whole kettle of fish altogether. But fundamentally, of course, right, we always have to remember this Corsaira problem, which is what Thucydides talks about when he mentions the revolution of Corsaira. He says, what happens when social fabric breaks down? Well, well, the, the definition of words starts to become fungible and people who want power grab at the words to try and redefine them for their own benefit. Um, and that's all they've got. That's literally the only tool in their toolkit. I mean, it's like at least other politicians were like other tyrants have been remotely competent. Like our leftist vanguard has nothing except the recreation, the forcible attempt to recreate reality by describing it in more and more disingenuous and dishonest ways. And, you know, we'll see if they succeed. I'm always an optimist. My money is against it. Um, but whatever else happens, it's plain that that's what they're doing once you have eyes to see it. Check out some of the other videos on this. 
page. We do a lot of stuff about the redefinition of language here at Young Heretics. I'm glad you're with us. Hit that bell and subscribe. Don't forget to you know share us around and check out uh, some of the other stuff we do. Glad you're here.